So good afternoon again. Um, and hopefully this is my sleepy time of the day during the Eastern Standard Time Zone of the US. I don't know if it's your sleepy time of the day or not. So if you need to get up and move around while we're speaking, that won't bother us. My name's Theresa Coiner, and this is Katrina Masterson. Um, we are co-chairs of the Nurse Practitioner Society of the Dermatology Nurses Association. We actually have worked for the same employer for 18 to 20 years now, is that correct? But we very rarely work in the same setting on the same day. It's a very busy practice. So we're gonna talk about virtual dermatology grand rounds. So this is a little bit about the background of what, what we did, why we did it. So grand rounds has always been used in medical schools and some nursing schools as a teaching tool. So newer technology now allows us to have people to participate at distant sites, not just at a university setting. The idea for virtual grand rounds actually originated from our environmental scanning committee within the DNA, which the environmental scanning committee to me was such a nebulous idea before I became involved with it. But it's actually a collective group of nurses who are members of the DNA who take a look at what's happening in the environment for either threats or trends that impact not only the organization but our membership. So what was our purpose for doing this? This was number one to enhance dermatology nurse practitioners knowledge of diagnoses, testing, treatment strategies for either challenging slash or interesting cases. It also was an opportunity to increase networking opportunities for dermatology nurse practitioners. That is one of our mission goals of our particular organization and a, a way to provide continuing education credits. So we did administer a survey to assess interest and support. And we have approximately 635 to 650 nurse practitioner members of the Dermatology Nurses Association. Approximately 10% of those did answer just an email blast about a survey. Hey, would you be interested in this? Would you participate? Because we're thinking about doing it over lunch hours. And that actually, for surveys for us, was a really high percentage. And it was overwhelmingly favorable. Yes, I want to do that. Uh, so then the next step was to evaluate various delivery options on how we could deliver this product. Uh, that especially we were looking for something that would allow participant dialogues together. And we looked at free conference coding, like a go to meeting, but there was so much background noise when people had all their cell phones on, it just did not seem to be feasible to do that, even though the price was, was very attractive. Um, so we finally did select the Dermatology Nurses Association CE platform, which is Digitel. So the input for the final decisions were gathered by the Nurse Practitioner Society committee members. Uh, we did do completion of the ANCC, which is our accreditation, one of our accrediting agencies. Uh, forms and planning tables that required us to do a planning form for all four sessions and, and then a table for each one and then creation of a evaluation form. We did use a PowerPoint format used to enhance visual appeal. Lecture content was taped prior to the session and there were pauses that would allow the participant to dialogue with the facilitator and the presenter. They were live sessions, the duration was 45 to 50 minutes. It was offered during lunch hours. Uh, audio discussion by the facilitator with on-screen photos and bulleted discussion points and people could type in what the responses were when you asked for things like, what else would you put in for your differential diagnosis? And so we had that chat platform. And I'm gonna turn this over to Katrina for the rest. So uh, our presentation uh, layout, the reason we chose to pre-tape uh, the presenter is we felt like we wanted member participation. And I think a lot of us feel really self-conscious when we're standing up in front of a room full of people. And so taping the actual um, history and physical and findings and, and stuff ahead of time kind of took that anxiety away from the presenter. They were present during the live webinar and able to speak and participate and answer questions. 
but I think that made them a lot less nervous. Um, we had the history and physical findings. We had some really very nice, high-quality photos. Um, they, they opened it up to the participants, and we developed a differential diagnosis list. And then based on that, um, we came up with um, pathology and diagnostic testing, and then we showed the actual results um, of the particular patient we were talking about. And then uh, we talked about treatment strategies. We presented both the actual treatment for this particular case, but then also I think the presenter and, and myself as facilitator oftentimes, we got new ideas from people all over, things that we hadn't thought of, and so it was really pretty exciting. Um, the evaluation was submitted uh, post the live session. And so here are some of the cases that we did. Um, and so you can see the photos. I think uh, the, the child photo here in the bottom was a little bit hard to see. I apologize for that. But really good, high-quality photos were available on this platform. And that uh, is the bulleted sample right there. Um, continuing education, it was 45 to 50 minutes of live webinar, followed by filling out the evaluation. So we were able to give one continuing education credit um, per session. These were offered free to the members, although the enduring, yeah, nurse practitioner members, society members, although there were other fees associated with the enduring part of this. Um, so we taped it, and then it's available on our CE prep platform, so people that couldn't make the live session could go ahead and participate, although they lost that interactive part of it. Um, review questions were added for the enduring part of it, uh, on the CE platform. Does that make sense? Okay, so we had the live webinar, and then we also put it on our CE platform, so you can go and download it and watch it, and, and still, I think, gain a lot from it, but you lose that interactive piece. But didn't it have review questions? Right, but then you had to answer the review questions, add the review questions. Um, these were the fees that we charged for it. And we had four sessions. And we, uh, in our inaugural year, we offered one on Eastern time, one on Central, one on Mountain, and one on Pacific, Pacific time. Um, patients with a reticulated rash, there were two samples of different presentations of the same diagnosis. And uh, then this infant with erythematous papular rash. And you try not to give it away when you're, when you're you know, getting the live session. And then we had two patients with uh, dermatologic conditions with um, significant psychosocial issues. So the evaluation was a uh, 12 questions, uh, Likert scale, one being not at all and five being the most favorable. I think that gives us a really nice snapshot. As you know, when you're developing an educational program, there is the surveying for interest, um, and then there is the thoughtful design and, and execution. But without this piece, without the evaluation piece, you know, you really aren't, um, I think, getting the full benefit from an, um, from an educational piece. And we divided this out by time zones um, because um, that's the different um, presentations. And I'm always immediately suspicious because all of these scores are extremely high. And I think we can all agree that um, when you're asking people to rate, they don't want to always say negative things. So as a researcher, I'm kind of suspicious. I think our lowest score was um, four. Yeah, was four. So did this do what we intended it to do? And it gives us a nice snapshot there. But what I find even more helpful, and even though it is less, um, it's more subjective and it's a lot harder to analyze is the free uh, comments. And so these are the things that the participants liked the most about it were the photos, the interaction, and the review of the differential diagnosis and then the treatment discussion. And I think this is helpful not only for your new uh, nurse practitioners in dermatology, but even experienced ones like Theresa and myself who've been around for a while. And these are the things that they didn't like. This particular platform 
for some reason had a seven second delay. So when Theresa and I would say something or facilitate something, there was a seven second delay and that was a little bit awkward. We got better at it at the fourth one than we were at the first one because there were big gaps. Uh, and that's I think part of the evolution of a program like this. Um, also more photos. So if I can give anybody any advice, I don't know how your countries work, but um, I carry consents with me. And when I see something interesting in the practice, I ask for consent to use the photo for educational purposes. And people are super generous. You know, oh yes, you know, I wanna present this at a meeting or I wanna teach other nurse practitioners about this. And, and they're very generous for the most part. So if that's something that you have to deal with, get the consent carry it with you and ask for photos and develop your own library. The other thing that um, they wanted to have handouts, which is something that we didn't think about when we're designing this. You know, when you're designing an educational piece, you try to, you know, um, anticipate everything that the learner is going to want, and you just can't do that. I think we all know that from experience. So. Um, the participation evaluations were overwhelmingly positive. Um, the rates of participation were higher on the East Coast and the West Coast, and that very much reflects our membership because that's their, where they're located. And also, the other thing is despite that initial survey, which showed us a tremendous amount of interest, attendance was lower than expected. So we got the 10% back on the survey, which is a very good number for that sort of thing. Um, but less than that, we should have had 60 participants at each session, and we did not. Um, how much is going to, uh, we're going to get out of this, you know, as far as educating our members in the future depends on how many people download and purchase the enduring portion of it, you know, the downloadable content. So our next steps is continuing to evaluate um, cost-effective platform to deliver this. I think that... Um, there's a lot of technology out there and maybe we're just not aware of all of it and we need to look into it more and practice um, how to free conference call. I think the interactive portion of this is vitally important. It's something that all of us want. We, ha we wanna have a group of people that we can talk to and say, hey, I've got this case and we need to talk about it. What else would you do? I'm beating my head against the wall and sometimes that extra set of eyes is vitally important. Um, we also plan to probably do this just East Coast and West Coast. Um, and then we want to broaden our dissemination and advertising, make sure that more people know about it, and to continue to advance, uh, enhance the member engagement segment of this. So, anything else, guys? Any questions?